Hello everybody, I'm back already with my new camera and hopefully my correct settings in OBS that has auto settings, auto for recording, auto for streaming, but they're not auto in and of themselves. So if you're changing, you have to manually change the auto settings. There you go, you learned something. The last video was a little blurry, I admit it. So this one should be, uh, should be better. And we're here today to talk about my favorite topic, which is my own personal agenda. But we're going to frame it in helping other people, which hopefully we do and we are. That's a side issue. So let's go over the thumbnail, which lays out the agenda. I make it first to... Give me an idea on what people might be interested in. So, uh, of course, it's light pumping propulsion. Same old thing for me, right? But we're going, going to apply it today to the Oumuamua mystery, which has been around for years, but I never made a video on it. And a new item, asymmetrical electrostatic pressure propellantless propulsion, which is a recent thing I saw on APEC. When I saw that, that reminded me of this, and then somebody brought up Oumuamua again, and I just can't help it. I hate to see people, I don't want to say struggling, but perhaps missing an option in their problem solving. Which to me, since everything I see, where's the hammer and nail, is related to light pumping, a lot of, a lot of these things. They get... The medium of light gets overlooked. It's either air, water, space itself, which it does have hydrogen in it and other stuff floating around, but not never just light itself. And then they go down to gravity waves or something, and then underneath that, the vacuum with the warp drive and all that, and maybe the Casimir effect, which I'm not ruling out anybody else here today. Let me be clear about that. I am just adding another alternative that I see missed over and over and over again, going back for years, where are we here? Years with the Oumuamua, I mean, I can tweet it 10,000 times, I can put this stuff in comments, etc. But if I do this and get it out of my system, all I need is one link. Click, and I don't have to repeat myself. So, where are we? Well, let's just look at the thumbnail quickly. Uh, pretty much explains the point here. Oh, I like the pink here, which matches the pink in the uh, stars, which is hydrogen, which is a big part of uh, the question about Oumuamua. And it's pretty close to the asymmetrical electrostatic pressure. Because if you take, take a, an, electro, an electron sitting on a film or something and stick a proton in it, what is it? It's hydrogen. It's absorbing, which, as we all know, absorbs light very, absorbs and emits light as better than anything else, I think. And a bare electron is going to be similar to that. Similar. We'll get into that later. First, we're going to go over the Oumuamua. So, where are we on Oumuamua? Here we are here. Oh, I don't know what you... You're going to get a lot of I don't knows and I don't remembers because this is a big picture thing. Okay? Big picture. You want the details? They're out there. But what Oumuamua was, was an interstellar object that came in. Look on <coughs> this uh, diagram here on the screen with the sun. It came in from inter interstellar space. Got so close to the sun it was within the... Uh, orbit of Mercury, which is very close, and, you know, shot under that and around Venus and <clears throat> through Earth's orbital. You can see it right there. Anyway, it's a big mystery on how did this happen. And so I'm going to get my two cents in here again today and um, suggest that there are other options to the ones that are being, that are the most prominent. And it's very simple. It's not, it's not complex at all. All right, so I, to do this, we are going to use my 
Twitter moment, where is it? Called Oumuamua Propulsion. Light sailboat? Or submarine? Hmm. Well, let's get into it. This Now, this thing is years old now. This goes back to early 19. Can you believe it? What was that? Five years on the calendar already? And it happened before that. I think it happened in 14. Uh, you know, don't, uh, that doesn't matter here. But it became a big fuss in 19, I suppose, when people started really going back and paying attention to it. Mainly Avi Loeb, who you all know. I don't have to explain that to you. <clears throat> um, regular viewers. So I'm not going to dig in, you know, I'm not going to throw in a lot of details that are half wrong and you already know, you know better than me, and are not really important to the overall big picture here. So here's an article from Haaretz about that. If true, this is the biggest deal since uh, in human history, which it is, possibly. And, uh, of course, I pose it, the question, light sail boat? which people were saying, well, it may have been artificially created. Maybe it's an alien light sail. Or it could be, you know, could be something else. Comet, it could be this, could be that. I am no astro... I'm no astrologer either. But, I do have my two cents. So I start butting in here on Twitter and promoting my own agenda. <clears throat> responding to these articles, and I did it a million times, and some of you saw it, you're sick of it, you know it. You're probably not going to learn anything from this, maybe not. But I say, perhaps Oumuamua is more of a light-pumping submarine than some kind of sailing mechanism. In other words, we're in space, we're underwater, we're not on it like a sailboat. It drives me bonkers sometimes, seeing the sail, 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 sail. I know a lot of people invested in it with money and with, uh, you know, emotional attachment and all that. But a light sail is more like a sunken raft underwater in the ocean going along with the current. Okay, it'll get you there, but my way gets you there better. Oh, that's what I'm getting at, the pump. You know, would you rather take a, sub, uh, a pumping submarine, which is the most advanced ones are, or I float on a sunken raft in the current. I, you know, I'd rather be indoors in a nice submarine having a cup of coffee. So, uh, a pump, it's more like a submarine than some kind of sailing mechanism. Light is absorbed, compressed, then emitted at a later time. That's what a pump on a nuclear submarine does. A Virginia class, high end, top of the line, etc. That's what we're going to try to do in outer space if we can get people paying attention to little things like that huge, gigantic medium of light. Okay? You have to put your brain in there first. That's what I'm trying to do here. Perhaps it is not being pushed by radiation pressure, which that's what a sailboat is. Everyone agrees. Light has momentum then, but if you come along and try to say, well, it's pumping, well, oh, that's not readily accepted, it's not, you know, whatever, it's not on a bumper sticker yet, but guess what, it will be, because it has to be, because nature is what it is, by design or naturally, in other words, it could, it could be just a, a frozen chunk of hydrogen, like they think, but it's not emitting hydrogen, it's not losing mass from hydrogen, it's losing mass equivalents from the light the hydrogen absorbs, even if it's frozen, even if it's very cold, even if it's this, even if it's that. It's still going to, unless it's completely, you know, uh, zero, perfect zero, absolute zero, which it probably is. It isn't. That's why it's pulling toward the sun, because it's getting those little light rays in there, coming in there, going through the thing and pushing out, <clears throat> in my opinion. And that's why it changed when it cooled off, too. Like the Pioneer Effect, which we'll get in a little more, bit more detail. I jumped ahead. Perhaps it is not being pushed by radiation pressure. It's a light sail. It's a light sail. Okay, we know you have big investors that love light sails and invest in light sails. We all know Bill Nye, 
uh, the right Yuri Milner, I suppose. He's a backer of the Galileo pri project, I believe. Also, I'm not sure. Good, it's all good. I'm just trying to add on to it, not take away from it. So, like I said, would you rather be on a submarine with me having a cup of coffee or a sunken raft? Plus, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll, it'll help your understanding if, uh, you know, knowledge is your business like it is at Harvard Astronomy Department. <clears throat> and... <clears throat> In another tweet, pardon me, I say to somebody else, I take your point about radiation pressure from the wind at some point. Solar wind, I don't know. Uh, but I imagine gravity and photon aerodynamics pho yeah, would overcome that. I think of a light pump. Sometimes it's riding with the current. Sometimes against pulling and pushing, gaining and losing mass. And uh, here I use this little image of a pump jet, whatever it is. Looks like it's, uh, you know, would you rather be on that or a sunken raft in the current? This thing looks like it's doing something deterministic and uh, thought out and etc. And that's in water. I'm saying we do it in space. That's all. And air and actually water eventually. Speaking as a non-alien, the concept is simple, not advanced. It simply has not been recognized or developed. That's me. Now look at that. That's right to the day, January 13th, 2019. This is 24. And I'm still beating this dead horse, folks. So let's look at our little slides. We've probably seen these before on other videos of mine. Like, share, subscribe. Here's the thing, you know, this all this does is tell you how to use hydrogen or something like it to catch light on purpose and pump it on purpose. Look over here, you have a whole universe full of it. Free. And this just tells you a couple of steps to do it, you know, I, a couple of selling points. Einsteinian, changing mass and gravitational field, Newtonian, propelled by radiation pressure. There's your thrust which we'll get into that later. Propellantless, fuel pumped, not stored. Which it's, is it a fuel or is it the medium? I'm gonna have to mince words. After all, this thing, this graphic is older. And then I have anti-gravity in quotes, transparent to gravity. That's how I thought of it originally. I don't know if that little phrase will ever catch. This is a long thing I've read before on here. You don't need to hear it again. This is the guys uh, discovering manned flight. Uh, Wright Brothers, sorry folks, you, you guys were second maybe. Good job. Anyway, okay, but these guys were before you and they'll probably be after you. Here's a little scheme, a little diagram, whatever you want to call it. We've been over that before in my other videos. This propellantless approach may be distinguished from other systems because it is an open system. Unlike the proposed closed systems using UNRWA waves or the quantum vacuum. That's not all of them, that's just most of them. Especially back four or five years ago. With the M drive and all kinds of other stuff. Okay, that includes a lot of things that uh, weren't excluded. So conservation of momentum is not an issue here. Okay, that was a big deal. That's not so much of a big deal anymore. I think that's sinking through the collective brain finally because it's free it's free momentum it's everywhere in the universe etc and so forth it's momentum we have people wondering where their momentum is coming from without considering the light medium which is what I'm here to browbeat about nor does it dig as deep as those approaches but only as far as gravity waves and gravitons Described as light freeing mass from gravity, it might also be seen as light pulling, pumping, pushing, or dragging mass through gravity, similar to the mechanisms of those concepts. Sure, sailing with photons is fine, but why not consider pumping them too? That goes back to 2018. And then here's more drawings here. Here's, here's the time. That was funny. I came up with this uh, notion. 
Then like a couple of months later, ESA, European Space Agency, comes out with the air-breathing electric propulsion, which is a pump. Now they use it in the atmosphere, the high up at upper atmosphere, and pumps have been considered before, even for interstellar. But they come up, you know, the answer to that is, is like, yeah, but you'll get only get a hydrogen once every 70 light years or whatever it is. And um, well, all I'm saying is use what's there then, okay? You got temperature there, you have photons, use the photons. It's a light breather. So I mock these guys a little bit with that, okay? Then what happened? That's, that's old. <laughs> 14, uh, no, uh, eight, 2018. So somebody here chimes in, so an aerogel space probe. Gotcha. Yeah, kind of. Well, as we've said before, an aerogel has loose. Look at this here. This is graphene, an aero, which is, you could call it a graphene aerogel holding hydrogen. Except here the hydrogens are bonded to the carbon. At each point, three on this side, three on the other side. But, as I've shown up here above in these uh, old drawings here, most notably this one, you can have them bond adsorbed or absorbed. If they're adsorbed, they're trapped. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, they're stuck on there. If they're interstitial, that's the word we want, then you have an aerogel-like thing. But instead of air, it's got hydrogen in it, which is air minus some, some other stuff, nitrogen or whatever. But you can put whatever you want in there that absorbs light and pumps it that you can control. But if you have it, my point is, if you have it stuck on the thing, the, the atom itself, you can control it better. Uh, so... Then, where was I? Sure, sailing is fine, but not white. Why not consider pumping them? So we're down here. We went over that. Imagine a hydrogen-infused aerogel pumping light for a radiation pressure propulsion, naturally or otherwise, which uh, Oumuamua might be naturally. Maybe it's some sort of thing that forms somewhere else. Or maybe it's a busted light pump from Planet X. That's, that's what I posted all over Twitter at the time. Pardon me, I'm going to take a sip here. Here's an example. I say it's a runaway rogue light pump jet out photoning what it absorbed from the sun on the way in. Not outgassing, because these people are saying it's outgassing, it's outgassing, it's outgassing, but there was no trail of gas. Then other people come along and say, well, it's it's uh, sublimating, which means it just uh, falls off, basically. The light makes the hydrogen, it, it's harder to track. In other words, the individual hydrogen atoms or molecules are just falling off because the bonds were broken, something along those lines. Um, but they're insisting that the full matter slash mass is falling off. I'm saying it could be light which is mass equivalent. That's all I'm saying here, folks. And here's hydrogenated graphene, which is graphene, which is a thing uh, maybe they would, space aliens would make a light pump looking gigantic thing out of that got broke off, fell off, and got lost in a crash. Who knows? And then for some reason, uh, in the next tweet, I go along to bring in the photonic crystals in nature. Okay, yeah, they can occur in nature, like on a butterfly wing, like in rocks, whatever, minerals, elements. But um, the butterfly isn't always a nice example. And then uh, I guess we're winding down a little bit here through this. I hope because I'm posting a scholarly article for the record, for Haaretz, and for the future, and for now. Yeah, this is the original article, which they proposed. Could solar radiation pressure explain Oumuamua's peculiar acceleration? Which is the light sail theory, which is 
okay with me, except it just doesn't work mathematically. It's not working with the astronomer's models. So that's why it's a mystery, and that's why I'm here saying, hey, consider this. Or don't. And then I say something like, oh, I try to get a little deeper on it other than sales. Or perhaps, or possibly it's a disentanglement, a smoothing of the local gravity mass fabric caused by light passing through, allowing mass a greater degree of freedom. That's like saying, that's a fancier way of saying what your own eyes can see with this balloon emoji, tiny on your screen, or these cl this cloud losing, uh, well, it's, it's changing from anti-gravity, it's a rain cloud, into water, which is what? Not anti-gravity, I'll tell you that, because it's on the ground. So it's bringing up the phases and how light interacts with matter. All right? Quit saying all right. All right. It may be in the nature of a light pump rather than a cell, absorbing and emitting photons as available and desired to change mass in a specific gravitational field. In other words, it could be a natural thing or it could be an artificial thing. A light pump from an alien or some kind of trapped... It could be just simple, uh, you know, trapped, frozen hydrogen trapped in there, but it's, it can still absorb light, even out there, in the cold. It'll absorb something, and, you know, it's going to have all different sort of uh, permutations. They're not going to be perfectly, perfect atoms there. They'll be all clumped together if it's a natural thing. Clumped in different uh, configurations. Perhaps it's more like a Virginia-class submarine with a pump jet, which is what that setup is called, then a space yacht, and a sunken one at that. And then here's a thing, uh, it's long, I've read this before on here, it's too long for this. Either way, that's why, in my opinion, pumping light for thrust is far more efficient method of momentum transfer than simply pushing with it, because gravity is, is disrupted within the mass not just around it. Perhaps a photon spin one uh, partially unties a gratum. Okay, I'm getting into more detail here. You've heard this from me elsewhere. The point is, I guess this is trying to attract the attention. Yeah, there's a physicist on there. Everyone knows. You can look it up later. And uh, say, hey, you know, that's how light works down there at this uh, lower level, probably. And it doesn't matter, because you can see it with your own eyes at the macro level. See? That's why I have archetypes, and no one has an archetype of warp drive or Casimir effect, even though they may, they may both perfectly be fine. I'm just saying this is simple, easy, may explain a few things for a few people. Because it's too simple. They haven't considered a thing so simple, like very few people have. But they will, because nature is what it is. I suppose this is as good a place as any to post my new graphene nanostructures image, okay? We've gone over that. That has its own video, by the way. But that was brand new, and so I stuck it on there to get people to look at that. And then I, to sum up, I say, I'm not done yet, but that's how we will ultimately move beyond rockets. Ooh, dangerous thing to say five years ago. Now people are all chomping at the bit to say it in Congress. I think that by pumping light in space, the speed of light can be approached. Yeah, see my previous videos. Reach out and grab light with hydrogen captured in a hydrogenated graphene. Build around it and ride along. Yeah, if you want to be like light, grab it. Grab onto it. How do you grab onto light, Kelly? It's just, it's, you can't even grab onto air. Yeah, but hydrogen can, and you can grab onto that, can't you? So you start with that, little pieces. Build up, build up and around. Pretty soon you have a giant triangle, football fields wide. 
AI can ride in the back and help with the directions. Well, I guess someone said AI is going to do something. Think about that. Well, yeah, okay. I'm still waiting over here. Be waiting a long time before AI has an imagination. <clears throat> uh, now, here's an article from space.com. Hydrogen ice? Unheard of composition could explain Oumuamua's weirdness. Now, that came out a year or something later, or sometime later, which, said, which basically says what I already said, and I'm sure it says it much better. Unheard of composition, I mean, there could be a zillion different, this is where AI could help when it gets up to speed, when it's programmed. And you could ask it, hey Siri, what unheard of composition of hydrogen could explain Oumuamua's weirdness? And it'll say, well, if you took chunks of this, certain levels of it are arranged this way, certain that way, etc. It's a pure math problem at that point, right? No need for us imagining things. Hmm, no outgassing for propulsion. Gee whiz. Could Oumuamua have been pumping light through hydrogen all along? No wonder it's interstellar. Smart Alec has to chime in, but it's a good question, and it's still open, isn't it? And I'm probably right. Yes. Yes, I am. Hydrogenated graphene, important, ma important material properties regarding its application for hydrogen storage. So I probably put that there beside the qu query by space.com about unheard of compositions. Well, it could be this heard of comp composition, especially if it's a thing from an intelligent being. Now, look at this. William Shatner, Oumuamua. Was it a piloted spacecraft? I guess he had a TV show. So I answered him below and confuse things. But on here I say, in the next tweet to space.com, I put him out of order to make more sense if you're reading it, but not if you're reading it in order in real time. Closer to a kid's lost balloon blowing across the road out of the shade and into the sunlight where it suddenly shoots straight up. Now, I told you about that when I saw that years ago in previous uh, videos. But I see the straight, the same thing again when it's an interstellar chunk of whatever going straight into the sun and reacting in a similar way to this balloon that I saw that helped kick off this entire agenda of mine. So back to uh, William Shatner. I think the same night, if I recall correctly, he had a show on Tic Tacs too, Tic Tac UFOs. That's another story. So I'm trying to jog his imagination because he was answering uh, tweets. I don't know if he ever saw these or liked them or not. He didn't answer. Well, yeah, I, he might have answered me at one point. I don't know. But, you know, obviously it wasn't important, a good... It wasn't... It's not here. How about a hydrogen iceberg that's manufactured, okay, say with graphene and vantablack, but, it, but that's controlling its light pumping intelligently and deterministically. See, I still remember my own buzzwords after all these years. And, um, yeah, I'm saying, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, hydrogen iceberg, that's what they're calling it. Well, what if it's an artificial thing made on purpose to do what it just did, but it's kind of like a hydrogen iceberg. How about that? Why would you not deterministically cause untold numbers of photons to act as one? I guess I wanted to show off my new little gif here that took a lot of effort to make this. So I'm like, I'm putting that out there immediately for any excuse. But yeah, imagine Oumuamua doing something like this. That's all I'm asking. Just consider it. Then throw it out. And then I close out this Twitter moment. This stuff will be linked below. These are now called X events. 
And I close it out by plugging my YouTube channel. So that's pretty much most of what I wanted to say about Oumuamua, if I recall correctly. And I will link, I'll just say one word about this, the Pioneer Anomaly. Which, I, I wasn't paying attention to this stuff when this happened. This happened a long time. Yeah, I, I remember it, but vaguely. So I'm saying, and that was a mystery too, and they finally figured it out. Well, it had to do with heat. Heat. The satellite's leaving the solar system. Suddenly it's so far from the sun, it's not affected by the sun, one way or the other. I forget the whole story. Anyone can look it up. Read this. You'll know it better than me. But the bottom line, the lesson is that they didn't consider the light-matter interaction until, yeah, well, they, they so, sort of did, but they didn't do it thoroughly and completely. And they did it the wrong way, what they did do, and then it came out sideways and backwards and upside down. But the bottom line is you have to look at it that way, backwards, upside down, and inside out. If you do that with Oumuamua and other things, you should at least consider it before you throw it out. Now, you know, here's nature. Even this year, okay? No, just last year, about a year ago. They are still... This is the sublimation paper, I believe. They're saying, well, it's water ice and the uh, radiolytically produced H2, you know, I don't know. It broke the bonds, it, you know, it's, it's one of the combinations of things that still concentrates on mass when they should be also considering, in my humble opinion, the light-matter interaction, which answers quite a few questions. But if you don't even consider it, because it couldn't be that, well, go ahead. Go ahead and wallow for years. All right, so that's my two cents on Oumuamua. Light matter interaction. I'll go right back to the uh, thumbnail and say you should explore that possibility. But acknowledging I am the hammer, you are a nail, I see your problem, I might be seeing it only through my own perspective. I'm probably not, but I am going to try to add to your perspective. Your call, folks. So, where was I? I was going to move on to our next possible candidate for light matter interaction in a gravitational field. And that involves these guys, who you may know from APEC. APEC and elsewhere. APEC, link below. And on APEC, 13 days ago, it, a, a similar situation to me, they're similar, because I'm the hammer that sees nails. Came up, you have these guys, let me name them, let me be uh, formal about it. They have a patent. Charles Raymond Bueller IV and Andrew Neil Aragema known to some of you as Drew from sunny Florida. Uh, one is a NASA employee, one is a contractor. I believe they're doing this on their own time, sort of. I, I don't know. You can ask them. Uh, yeah, here's a whole presentation on it, okay, in good detail. Here's a patent. And all I'm doing is they know it works. Congratulations but they don't know really why. And if, you know, if you know why it works, you might be able to improve upon it. So I'm trying to help you out here. Just consider it, if you so choose. And I'm going to read this entire patent. It's an abstract. It's short. But I'm going to read it just to uh, refresh my recollection and in case you're listening and not watching this video, which, you know, how watchable is it? A guy reading from a thing. 
So you were probably listening to it, like I do to a lot of these, and listen on double speed. Quote, uh, here's the title. System and method for generating forces using asymmetrical electrostatic pressure. Abstract. A system and method for generating a force from a voltage difference applied across at least one electrically, electrically conductive surface. They're going to stack them. The applied voltage difference creates an electric field resulting in an electrostatic pressure force acting on at least one surface of the object. Asymmetries in the resulting geometry of the asymmetries in the electrostatic pressure force vectors result in a net resulting electrostatic pressure force acting on the object. Good. The magnitude of the net resulting electrostatic pressure force is a function of the geometry. Yeah. Unless you're moving it around across the skin, the skin's uniform, and what in your signal is asymmetric. The geometry of the electrically conductive surfaces, the applied voltage, and the dielectric constant of any material present in the gap between the electrodes. The invention may be produced on a nanoscale using nanostructures such as carbon nanotubes. The invention may be utilized to provide a motivating force to an object. A non-limiting use case, case use example, is the use of electrostatic pressure force apparatus as a thruster to propel a spacecraft through a vacuum. Yeah, it'll work in a vacuum. Uh, which is good, good, good for you guys. But the thing is, they don't know why. All right, if they, they haven't, they don't, I, I think it's fair to say they don't know why. You can characterize it yourself. They have theories, I've seen them conjecturing on, on YouTube, and they haven't been conclusive, so I'm saying they don't, they don't have a theory on why it's working. And uh, all I'm doing here is proposing uh, that, it's, that the bare electrons are interacting with the light medium. Now, you may have a vacuum like you have in space, like you have it in your NASA test setup, but you didn't pump out the temperature in there, just the air. So there's temperature of some kind in there. And maybe some sort of penetrating, you may have it in a Faraday cage or whatever, but something's getting through there. Now, I could be, maybe it's interacting with neutrinos. I just thought of that this morning, but I'm not even sure I believe in those. Not really. Or something else, something that's getting through there. But we, what we do know is that there is something in there, and that is the temperature in there, the ambient light in the vacuum chamber, So, which is what space kind of is. No air, but lots of ambient light. So, yes, it will work in there, but I'm saying these electrons, they're bare, they're not stuck on a proton like a hydrogen is. They're bare, but they, they are still going to interact with some frequency. Is that what's getting in there? Is that what happens? Remember, you know, you've got a 10 to the 15 zeros chances every second. So at some point, they're going to catch one that works, and it'll, it'll thrust a little bit, especially if it's aimed by the shape of the thing, which is a good shape. We've seen that, right? Here's the shape of the thing. You can look at the patent link below. You can blow up the shape of the thing here. A thing, yeah, a thing like that. Oops. A thing shaped like that, a thing shaped like that, a field around it like that, layered like that, etc. and so forth. So what I'm saying here is the summary to this is, and really all I have, have to offer here is, guys, Drew, Charles, you may want to consider the fact that you have a light pumper here interacting with a light medium, 
which in your case is probably temperature or whatever else can penetrate your vacuum chamber. That's all I wanted to say about it. Uh, I could have set it on APEC and butted in within 50 people, but the last time it came up on the uh, town hall, I was tired after a long day. I don't feel like butting, butting in there. I'm not ready. I just ate, etc. Plus, I have a YouTube channel, so I'll come out here and say it. But I will talk about it anytime you want to, in any format you want to. Uh, yeah, all right. So, kind of what I'm saying is, guys, this thing, you're starting to build up to this thing, which is a basic metamaterial, which you could call this thing a basic light pumping metamaterial. In my opinion, I hope that doesn't bother anybody. It's just a suggestion. I'm not going to call it that. I don't think. I don't know why I would. I would say it reminds me of it, but um, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. Electrostatic pressure force apparatus as a thruster. What are you thrusting? You say you have momentum. Where did you get it from? I say you're thrusting photons, and that's where you're getting your momentum. I'm also saying that can be improved upon, etc. and so forth. But this thing, boy, <clears throat> wouldn't a thing like this perhaps come in handy when your astrobotic peregrine uh, moon lander is leaking? Oh, leaking propellant. Oh. That's another reason I, made, I had to do this. Because a thing like this electrostatic gizmo filmed stacked where a thing like this light pumped through graphene is coming down the pike and it's gonna it might just start out by fixing those little problems because maybe all you need is just a little bump all right <clears throat> Well, at least the leak slowed down, and they're getting a lot done anyway as of this date, 1-13-24. But that company's headquartered not far from here in, in Pittsburgh. I'm just outside of it. And um, so that was on my mind. Plus, Oumuamua came up somewhere in the news. I don't know why. It hadn't been around for a while, but there you go. You got a leaky thruster from 10 miles down the road or something. You've got these guys on APEC. Let's find our guys on APEC. APEC.com. Where is it? Oh, here it is. And they, are, they have questions. And then you have Oumuamua hanging out here again. So, therefore, I was compelled to make this video while I was in a video-making mood, and it's cold out there. It's not snowing, but it's pretty windy. I don't know if I want to walk around in the trees today, but I might anyway. But I think that's all I had to say. Let me check my notes here. Did I forget anything? No, bottom line is, right on the thumbnail... A question for people that may, uh, an answer, a possible answer for people that may have questions. And that answer is light pumping. Of course it is. In this case, maybe. But of course I'd say that. That's what I always say. All right, gang, I'm about to pull out of here. Let's get a better background to pull out with. Here we are, and I will enlarge myself for just a second here, lose the cheap glasses, and wave my way out of here. Thanks for coming, folks. See you next time. Like, share, subscribe. Enjoy a brief outro in this under one hour video. We will see you next time, whenever that is.
Thank you.